editing your astrophotography photos on your phone. I do it with Snapseed, today we do it with Lightroom. We're gonna take this photo and turn it into this in this video. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. Every week I do two videos all about small center photography. That is your mobile phone, your GoPro, drones, all that sort of stuff. And I bring you these videos twice a week, each and every week. If you're new here, have a look down the bottom in the description. A link to everything I'm talking about is right down there below. Don't forget, subscribe, and if you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. Today, what we're doing is taking this photo, putting it into uh, Adobe Lightroom Mobile, and we're going to turn it into this. It's pretty simple. I'll show you how to do it. Now, Adobe Lightroom Mobile is not just for editing photos taken on your phone. You can edit photos taken from a regular camera, most modern cameras, have a Wi-Fi function built in. So you can transfer those raw files to your mobile device and edit them on your mobile phone in Adobe Lightroom Mobile. It's pretty bloody cool. It's not just for editing photos, you can actually capture photos within the app with the inbuilt camera that's in the app. It's a full manual controlled camera. It even shoots raw. The downside is it shoots for only up to one second. So it's not much good for doing astrophotography photos like we're about to do today, but it still is a good app for just taking photos in general, if you want full manual control. So when it comes to which app I use to edit my photos, when I go to Adobe Lightroom, it's mainly because I can do global adjustments or whole image adjustments, and that is like for taking like the, the exposure, the brightness, the contrast, that sort of stuff, and it affects the whole image. But the selective edits that you can do in Lightroom is better, in my opinion, than Snapseed. Things like brushes, uh, radial tools, gradient tools, all those things in Lightroom are just better than Snapseed. The best thing from my point of view about Lightroom Mobile is the presets that are available out there. There are heaps of presets available out there. And presets, really, it's kind of like if you're a writer and you've got writer's block and you've got a blank page there and you just don't know where to start, a preset is a really good way to push you a little bit and start the edit. I've got five presets available to you right now. I've just released them just the other day. They're on the website, phonephotoschool.com.au. There are five there for five Australian dollars, and that's not much. Um, these are all astro and light painting presets, and they give you a reasonably good indication as to what they're going to do in that preset to start. Now with presets, it's really important, and it doesn't matter what platform yet you're on, a preset is just to start the edit. It's not the process to do the whole edit. Very important, every photo is different, you still need to adjust some things after you've applied the preset. So this photo that we're dealing with now, this is not a phone photo, this is a photo just from my Canon 5D Mark III with a Samyang lens, so it's a pretty good astro setup to take photos of the Milky Way. This is a raw file, I'll link up the top here. On the tutorial at phonephotoschool.com.au for this tutorial that we're doing right here, if you go to that website, go to the tutorial, you can download this raw file yourself and you can follow through with exactly what I'm doing right now. So this photo here, it's not a phone photo, but when we get to a point where it's different, I'll certainly let you know that this can be a little bit different or a little bit tricky with a phone. All right, let's have a look at this edit. Where we're going to start though, you've got all these things all the way across, you've got light, color, effects, all that sort of business, and we'll get to them in just a second. But where we're going to start with this edit, you don't have to start here, but I'll actually go across to where the presets are and I'll bring in one of the presets that I'll use. That's a nearby town cloudy pink. That preset was specifically designed for this video here in light painting that old Chevy, but it works for this photo. So we'll hit that, I'm quite like that. Uh, hit the tick. If you hold now your finger on the screen, and take it off, you can see the before and after the original photo and what you've just done to it. So I actually don't mind that. We're going to go over to light and we'll increase the exposure just a little bit and we're really going to increase the contrast. Every time I'd make an adjustment on this, I'm really looking at the core, that galactic core and what it's actually doing in those edits to that core. The other things that are around the image, I can generally fix up afterwards with gradient tools and things like that, but I'm really after the core. The core is what makes this photo. So I wanna increase that contrast. We'll leave it around 50, 54, 
and we might decrease the highlights just that little bit. So if we watch the core and what happens with the core when I increase and decrease that highlights, when it's down lower, it definitely looks better. We'll decrease the whites a little and increase the blacks a little. And I quite like how that looks there. How that core looks is pretty good. If we go across now to color, and because we've shot, well, this image here is a, a raw image. So it's brought the, um, the white balance across, but we can adjust that pretty easily. With most astrophotography photos, they're generally taking through the winter months here in Australia. Um, so it's generally a bit colder. So I tend to make them that little bit colder um, in, with the white balance. In the summer, like look, if you look here, we can bring this up and it tends to look a bit orange and, and quite frankly, I don't think that looks all that great. Um, but if you go too cool, too cold, it just looks too blue. So I'm going to bring that back um, to about 39, I think, about 3,900, thereabouts. Yeah, 30, what's that, 3,820, that'll certainly do. With this sort of photo, I've already increased the magenta and the magenta in the tint, and that's come across from that preset. Now I don't mind that, we can certainly bring it down and get rid of that magenta. In fact, we will, we'll get rid of that a little bit. I quite like how that looks now in that galactic core. It's not as purple. Um, we'll leave the vibrance there, we'll leave the saturation down a little bit. These are the tools now, across now in, I'm across now in the effects tab, that really make an astro photo pop on a mobile device. And that's the clarity slider and the dehazing slider. And it gets rid of that cloudy look in the galactic core. Actually, I quite like that. So we've increased the dehazing substantial amount and we've increased the clarity a substantial amount. The vignette that's there was mainly from the Chevy photo that I took, that one. Um, and we don't necessarily need that in this photo. So we'll, we'll bring that back to zero. Now, I don't know if you notice that, when I just double touch on that circle that's on that slider, when I double touch on that, it will bring it back to the center. So you can zero that straight away. The next tab across is the details tab. Now on your mobile phone, this is going to certainly be the tab that you hang around in quite a bit because most of them are small little sensors and the little bloody things put out a lot of noise. So we need to be dealing with that noise. I'll, I'll generally sharpen a little bit and with the masking on the mobile device, I'll bring that twice of what I've got with the sharpening. I'll bring the masking up twice of what I've got to the sharpening. On the, on the desktop version of this, you can hold different keys and it will show you what you're masking out. Not the case with the mobile device. The noise reduction, I've already increased this up a little bit. The noise reduction is something that you have to decide on yourself. So if I zoom right into this galactic core, you'll see there's a little bit of noise in there. And as I slide this slider up with the noise reduction, you see that I lose a fair bit of detail in there. So it's a little bit of a trade-off as to what you're going to achieve with the noise reduction slider. Less is more, but mobile phones, when you're shooting this, almost all of them um, tend to have more noise. So you can do things like shooting, if you've got an iPhone with iPhone 12 Pro, uh, you can certainly do things like the Apple Pro Raw and that will help with the noise. Things like uh, the Google Pixel is just a star eater. That thing is incredible for astrophotography and you can, Really, the way that it does that computational photography, there's almost no noise on that photo as well. The, uh, there's certainly another, a few other flagships, if you like, that are out there that take some really cracker photos of the night sky. So they're all a little bit different. This is the part that on this tutorial that's a little bit different for phones. So you need to just find that slider where it suits your device that you're shooting. But on this photo here, and you can go and download this photo yourself, um, I'm finding that roughly 20 to 25 is the optimum sort of number for me. And um, that's it. When I'm finished with this, I just hit the button up the top there with the arrow to export the file, export that to camera roll, it's saving it, and we're done. Let's have a look.